All right, we are going to talk about how to make the inverse of sine. So right now I am drawing the y equals x line because as we know, inverses are over this line. I'm going to start drawing the inverse. Remember, all those points are reflected over the y equals x line. And if I continued that, whoop, that's the entire function, well, one period of it, reflected over the y equals x line. Unfortunately, though, <clears throat> what we're looking at is not a function. The vertical line test doesn't happen at all here. And so what we need to do is it would be great if it started at 0, and we could just kind of look at that first little uh, part right there from 0 to, to 1 pi, except we're going the other way up, up the y-axis. But that really can't happen. So what we do is we chop off from pi halves to 3 pi halves. And again, we're going the opposite way in the y-axis, but so now what I've drawn is that on the unit circle, but mathematicians are crazy and they don't want to use that because they really like zero and they really want something to go through zero. So instead, they just use the other half of the circle, negative pi halves to one pi half. So here is the range that we're going to use when we solve inverse sine problems. That's called the principal values and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, we are now looking at a cosine graph, and I have drawn in our y equals x line, and so we're going to start creating the inverse of that. There you go. This one's a little bit more convenient than sine because when we look at it starting at zero, we don't have to deal with the vertical line test not working. So if you see, I start from zero and kind of make half of that period there. I, I don't have any issues with the vertical line test. So when I map it out on my unit circle, it's totally fine to just go from zero to 1 pi. Again, that's what the representation is on the y-axis is from 0 to 1 pi. Alright, we're going to try tangent. I've got tangent drawn. I am going to draw the asymptotes that are flipped over the y equals x line first because as we know that they were vertical, now they're going to be horizontal. Okay, as I think about the y equals x line, imagine what that tangent portion would look like if it was flipped over. It would kind of be curved the opposite way and then come up and hug that asymptote. So there is the one part of the tangent. There's the other. Inverse tangent's a crazy beast. And then the other uh, branches would be like that. So to kind of highlight what this looks like, if you've got one branch going in between negative pi halves to pi halves in the y direction though. So that guy right there. Boom. Nice part though is that when you look at it on the unit circle, it's the same portion that we used for sine. Yay, that makes it convenient. All right, to recap, we've got the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. I'm just drawing the basic one period graphs of inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. I would recommend going back through and watching these cute, fast little tutorials about how to find the principal values. So for sine, they're right there, negative pi halves to pi halves. Cosine, they're from zero to one pi. That's easy enough for cosine. And then tangent is the same as inverse sine from negative pi halves to pi halves. And uh, when we use those, you can watch the next little tutorial of when we want to actually use the principal values.